Thank you. Uh, one of the beautiful things of, of uh, having a lectern in front of you is you don't have to hold your stomach in <laughs> for the whole, uh, uh, whole time. Uh, people always ask me, do you want a lectern? And I say, of course. And, and, uh, and, uh, and then one day, uh, I'll never forget, I, uh, I showed up on stage and walked you know, confidently out. And, uh, and the lectern was there, but it was made of glass. <laughs> and uh, I had to hold my stomach in for an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a big man try to hold his stomach in <laughs> for that amount of time, but it is not a pretty sight. <laughs> so tonight should be, uh, should be a little easier. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, and, you know, normally uh, I, I don't um, begin so seriously, but, but I've got to tell you, uh, I, uh, I am eternally grateful when a community picks one of my books to read. Um, we're very fortunate in that. We've, we're, we're one of the most picked, most selected books in the country for community-wide reads, and that's... Uh, you know, that's a great gift. But to pick all three of them <laughs> is, uh, is more than that. And uh, I, I know that you're only here tonight because there wasn't anything good on TV. <laughs> but I, uh, I thank you for, for reading the books. I hope you liked them. Uh, if you thank you. thank you, if if you didn't like them, your local bookstores are giving everybody triple their money back. Uh, and I actually said that once, and somebody took it back. Uh, and uh, yeah, I thought, well, at least they thought they were getting triple their money back instead of just one. The best thing that ever happened to me with a book was a, a fellow walked up to me at a book signing and said. Um, I was in a bar, and I was reading your book, and I had a new beer in your book, and I had to go to the restroom, and I left, and I came back, and the beer was still there, but someone had stolen your book. <laughs> and that made me very happy. Uh, but then, I thought that story would pretty much as good as it gets, until a friend of mine said, true story, said, I was at Baptist camp in the lunchroom, and I got up to get some tea, and I left your book on the table, and I came back, and it was gone. Anybody that will steal a book in Baptist camp? <laughs> is either the lowest form of humanity, or has excellent taste in books. So what I thought I'd do tonight, I am uh, not going to pretend to lecture. Uh, I, I don't even like that word. That's just a bad word. Uh, uh, so what I'll do, if it's okay with y'all, is we'll read a little bit from the books, just a bit, and then we'll talk a little bit about how they came together, and then we'll uh, just talk. I would rather talk with you than talk at you. I can't see real good out there, but if you wave your arm real hard or else wad up some paper and throw it at me, uh, we'll just do it that way. But uh, I always wonder what it is about the books that touch people enough to make them, to make them come to a book signing and, and make them walk up to you and say, usually by covering your book covering the face on the cover of your book with the thumb or finger saying, that's my mother, or that's my father, or that was my grandfather. And, um, and then they say, you stole my story. <laughs> and uh, they mean it in the very best way. Um, it took me a long time to figure out exactly what was behind those words. 
And I think I finally figured it out. Um, by show of hands, and don't lie, <laughs> by show of hands, how many of you are descended one generation, two generations, or three are descended from people who worked with their hands? That's the, the backbone of the books. Um, it's very nice to have people talk about your writing. It's very nice to have them pat you on your big old round head and tell you that there's some talent in there. But the truth is, the backbone of these books are now and will always be class. Will, will be a struggle that people endure uh, to make life a little better for the people around them. And uh, I think that's why y'all are here tonight. Uh, there are a lot of other things that enter into it too. Uh, let's try another little experiment. How many, and just the ladies please. How many of you, well I don't care, the men can raise your hand if you want to, but uh, how many of you are married to a good man? How many of you are lying? <laughs> when we did the first book, when we did All Over But the Shouting, uh, I did it uh, as a love story for my mother. It wasn't any more complicated than that. I wanted to honor her for going 18 years without a new dress so that I would have school clothes. I wanted to, to thank her for taking in laundry and taking in ironing. And uh, that's all really that book was intended to do. But I knew that to show how bright my mother's light was in my life, I needed to show the darkness that had forced her to be that way. And I didn't want to whine about it because, you know, gosh almighty, you know that... You know, you can be like sitting watching daytime TV. When I do play hooky, sometimes I do. And, uh, and you'll be flicking through and there's somebody, you know, and they've got a mighty, there's, you know. I didn't want to whine. And uh, so I wanted to, to, to paint people a picture, to try to paint them a picture of uh, why my mother's sacrifice was necessary. And my mother's sacrifice was necessary because she married for love. And uh, so I wanted a picture, an image. Y'all have red birds up here, right? Okay. You probably call them cardinals, right? Okay. So I started shouting with a picture, an image from my childhood, and we began it this way. I don't have to read it. It's been in my head for 13 years. I used to stand amazed and watch the red birds fight. They would flash and flutter like burning rags through a sky unbelievably blue, swirling, soaring, plummeting. And on the ground, they were a blur of feathers, stabbing for each other's eyes. I've seen grown men stop what they were doing, stop pulling corn or lift their head out from under the hood of a broken down truck just to watch it. And once, when I was little, I watched one of those birds peck itself to death in the side mirror of a drunk truck, hurling itself against an unyielding image till the glass was cracked and smeared with blood. And I asked an old man who worked for my Uncle Ed, an old snuff-dipping man named Charlie Bivens, I said, Charlie, why do you reckon that bird did that?